you a bit about me. Uh, some time I spent in Sweden in September as an international journalist, and then with a problem that is plaguing women and girls right now. So I'm in the prime of my youth, contrary to what my birth certificate and my children say. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a friend, and I'm also an ally to truly some of the most amazing people on the planet. Um, and I am also a survivor. A grown man first paid to use my body for his sexual pleasure when I was 13 years old. And that would continue on for the next 15 years with no interference by anyone. I worked indoors and outdoors. I worked licensed, I worked unlicensed. But the years that impacted me the most and and are the ones I'm actually the most proud of, are the ones that I worked the downtown east side with some of my friends, my best friends that I have to this day. And my other friends who are found on a pig farm that I no longer have with me. In, when I was 29 in 2000, I was given an opportunity to transition into a healthier life for both me and my children. And I seized that opportunity. And it's been 10 years since I stood at my corner, at the corner of Franklin and Salisbury. For five years after leaving, I would heal. I would have my last child. I would walk into a new paradigm of living, a new way of being, something that was a fuller, richer version of myself, something that wasn't so stunted and so abused. In 2002, I would watch with the rest of the country as it was announced that a farm that we have long told police about was in fact the final resting place of some of my friends. My passion for news and for writing and just being connected, for which I was greatly made fun of when I was working, um, would give me an opportunity to actually cover the Robert Picton trial from my perspective as a former prostitute and as a friend to some of his victims. I miss my friends, and I want them back, but I can't have them back. So in their honor, I will try and change the world with our experiences and make you listen to our truth. I want this to stop from happening. I'm going to use this story to illustrate what I want to say. And it's a story that was told to me by Sherry Smiley, who's Danae from the T Thompson region and Navajo. And it's a story told to her by her grandmothers, who was told to her by her grandmothers. And it goes on as back long as time. And it's a story of women who are beside the river. And women notice a little baby floating by. And the women go in and they get it out of the river. And they bring it back to shore and they dry it off to see if anything's wrong to clean it off. And then they notice more babies coming down and the women go in and they get the babies and they bring the babies out. And they clean the babies and then they feed the babies and it starts an assembly line of these babies flowing down the river. And they teach the babies how to swim to be safe. And then they look up. And one woman is walking up the river, and the other women call her back and say, where are you going? Come back here. Come help us. And she says, I am going to go find where these babies are coming from and stop it. And this is what I want to do. I'm not saying women are babies. That is not the take home message. But what I am saying is that is how we are tr trying to currently deal with women in prostitution. We pull them out of horrific situations, trying to help them with stopgap measures. The ones still alive get detox, a Band-Aid for fat lips and bruises. The others get to sit somewhere and process the rape that they've just experienced. 
those with educations higher than mine. I only have a grade seven education. Those with educations argue if we legalize this abuse, we can make it safer for women. But what we need to do is go to the mouth of the river and look at who is pushing women and girls in the water, pushing women and girls into prostitution. While downstream service providers, friends, social services, organizations on the front line are busy pulling them out. We need to change what is happening upstream so the casualties stop flowing. We need to stare evil in the face and say no more, not on my watch. I want to say what is now the take home message. Prostitution is allowed to continue and remains uncontested because it is rooted in gender inequality. Poverty, racism, colonialization, addictions, abuse, those are the systemic reasons that funnel women into it. But it is allowed to continue jeopardizing the lives of women and girls globally because of gender inequality. Prostitution is violence against women, both in individual acts as well as the societal climate it creates that all women have to live in. I just got back from Sweden and went to a two-day presentation by the Swedish government and learned about their model of prostitution law, which is what I uh, strongly represent and fight for here in Canada. They looked at prostitution through the lens of gender inequality and framed it as violence against women. And in Sweden, they criminalized men being able to use their power and privilege and their money to demand the sexual subordination of all women. So it's called the Nordic Mall of Law, and that's what we advocate for. And I had a presentation by the Minister of Gender Equality, the former, and he tells a story that rocked me. They have a hall of art, and they did a call for 200 pieces of art. And of those 200 pieces, 50 would be picked to be in their prestigious art place. I don't know art. And they noticed that of, the, and of these 200 pieces of art, no one's name was on it. So you didn't know if, who painted it, if it was a man or a woman. And of those 50 pieces of art, 40 were painted by men. And he says, some who were not so, favor, not so in favor of gender equality said, there you have it. Men paint better than women. And he chuckled. And he said, and while shaking his head, no, no, that is not the answer nor the explanation. It is the male norm that decides what is thought of as quality. So if you paint something that breaks the norm, it is not considered as competent, as valuable as the norm says. And what we must actually be challenging and changing is the male norm of normal. We must deconstruct the male view of normal and of women and of equality, and of progress. If we were to follow Sweden, do we really think the river of male demand and privilege and money would be allowed to thrive? Would we still argue and abandon women in the name of choice when we look long and hard at the systemic issues at play that deny women the fundamentals of life? It is the male demand that must be dealt with head on. We need to remember, remember, it was never the laws that beat and raped and murdered me and my friends. It was men. It was never the location we were in that was unsafe. It was the man we were in that location with that made it unsafe. I love men. I do. I want you to be brought into a fuller version of yourselves as well. But what I am tired of is society excusing your poor behavior. How different would my life be? Would the lives of millions of women and girls globally be if we said no to that? What would happen to human trafficking if no one was buying what was being trafficked? 
how would that improve your life if I wasn't allowed to be prostituted just because I'm poor? Do we think it's a sign of an egalitarian society to be able to use privilege and money to demand sexual subordination of women and girls? What if we stood up to that demand? What if men came into a fuller, bigger version of themselves and women were then given the freedom to come into a fuller, bigger version of ourselves? <clears throat> I'll end with the last story because I think we remember story. And I was on a date one night and I was sitting beside him in the driver's seat and I thought he was reaching under his seat to get his wallet. And I remember the crowbar flying through the air and I don't remember anything after that. I remember coming to and a man at a payphone was holding me up calling 911. And I remember coming to again in the hospital and I remember the police there. And I remember one of the first questions they asked was what I did to make him mad. We have to stop blaming women for their oppression. We have to stop blaming women for the conditions they live in because we live in a society that was completely constructed by men. The laws the social policies were constructed in a way that do nothing to honor me, defend me, stand up for me, or give me a chance to cre grow into who I really am. That is what we need to do. I know some argue choice. You have to argue choice when you live in a society constructed like we have. But I want to dream bigger. I want to dream bolder. I want to stop my friends from drowning in the river. I want all women, poor, brown, abused, addicted, I want all women to be able to come into a bigger version of themselves. We need to interfere with poor male behavior. You need to grow into something that's bigger. Your orgasm can no longer dictate my oppression. It has to stop. It's got to stop. It stunts the way we can relate to each other. It sells us both short. It sells all women short. In, du in um, Dutch nurses earlier this year had to come out with an entire ad campaign explaining how providing manual release wasn't a part of their job because prostitution is legal in their country. Why can't we ask for it from all women? In New Zealand, where it's decriminalized completely, the prostitution union had to get together with the government to come up with an occupational safety and health document because it's just a job. And they teach women in this handbook for occupational safety and health, how to safely use topical numbing agents on their vaginas so they can keep working. It's just a job. We need to think bigger when we think about prostitution. It's not legalize and tax it. That's not the solution. The solution is we need to finally stand up to patriarchy and say enough is enough. We are dying. We are dying, and it's got to stop. So I invite you into this, men and women. You can partner with us. You can ally with us. You can help create change in your own community. You can challenge the men in your life as to whether or not they view pornography. Do you buy your orgasm? Can you please stop? Because my freedom relies and rests on it. Invite them into a fuller version of themselves, but stand up and say enough's enough. We're gonna be the generation that changes women's position in society because that is a radical idea that will change the world.